Well, hello, hello, Facebook. It's Melissa from the Top Door RVA. I am going to do some painting, and I thought I haven't taken you all live for a little while, so I thought you might want to join me on my little painting journey today. It's absolutely nothing special. This is not a custom order. This is completely sit on the floor, decide what colors I want to do, and, and paint all the things. So it's my usual go-to when I have a lot of things to do, and of course that means I'm not going to do them. I would rather hang out here with you and do some painting. I stopped in at my AC More Crafts today and I picked up some fun little stencils. So these stencils are um, a little bit different. One is kind of this little, I don't know, I guess what would you call this? It's kind of just like a little pattern, a little harlequin pattern. And then I've also got some flowers as well. So this little abstract flower stencil and this little pattern. I'm gonna do a little bit of an ombre paint on this today. Um, I do have a new color that I haven't used yet today. I did order the kudzu, which is really cute and really green, and it looks like a lot of fun. So I have this little Queen Anne style table that's seen better days, and it was in the shed. I thought, well, why not just take it out and have some fun with it? Let's paint some color. Let's uh, get back in the swing of things. I do have a live tomorrow on the Dixie Bell paint page, so this will help me kind of get back into the swing of things and get things going on. So I've got my kudzu. I've got also another new color, which is my Caribbean Moonshine Metallics. Look how pretty that is. It's crazy pretty. So I'm gonna probably do this on the drawer with my Holy Guacamole. I like to accent the drawers a little bit differently um, when I'm doing kind of an ombre pattern. It's a good way to kind of make the, the hardware stand out. And this has that horrible bat wing handle, which I'm not the biggest fan of, but I'm gonna spray paint it gold and it's gonna be really cute because it's going to blend well with this. So if you know the style of painting, this is an ombre blend. I'm gonna move this out of the way. Hopefully it won't fall down. Probably will. There we go. Stay over there. <laughs> so I've got a couple different colors. I've got the kudzu. I've got some mermaid tail. My go-to mascara and wine, I paint with this all the time and I grab some cobalt. So here's the deal with painting ombre. When you're doing an ombre blend, it's kind of an important thing to do is to stay within the same color family. I like to stay bright, I like to stay bold, I like to stay very bright with my colors and keeping them within the same color family helps me blend a lot easier. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna start on one leg with one and I'm gonna move it all the way around and we're gonna come around and see how far we can get. There are dogs home today, and my husband probably will be home for lunch shortly, which means they're gonna bark, so I just will pre-warn you right now. There's always noise around my house, kids, dogs, all sorts of things going on. So, join me in my little painting journey, and let's get started. So a couple little things you're gonna need when you do um, an ombre blend, all right? You're going to need separate paint brushes. These are my separate brushes. There's no rhyme or reason, I kind of have a little bit of all different sizes. Um, I do like this, this little mini angle, which is easy to hold, but then I also like the medium because it's not too heavy, the flat medium. It tends to get hard to do a lot of work if you have a very large, heavy brush, and this is not, um, definitely not heavy. So I do like this one. You're gonna see that a lot. You're gonna need a spray misting bottle. I have two down here. I just got my, yikes, I just got my new one um, from Dixie Bell. So I was using this one before. This is my tinier one from Hobby Lobby, and I did receive my new one which has way more misting power. This little guy right here, I'm kind of in love with it. You can tell I've already been using it and loving on it a little bit. Everything that I love has paint all over it. I mean, hello, look at that. So we are gonna do some paintings today and I'm gonna hopefully put you up a little bit higher so you can see. Let me see what I can put you up on. Oh, well, you know what, you can see the feet. I can see my hands, so that means you can see the feet. Let's get started. This piece has been cleaned with white lightning and has been scuff sanded. The reason I scuff sand my pieces um, is because when I'm painting, I wanna know that my paint has something to grab onto, okay? By scuff sanding and allowing your, your paint to kind of adhere to the piece a little bit better, you're kind of giving yourself the guarantee that it's not going to scratch off as easily. I do like to seal my pieces. I do like to use poly acrylic. I do like to use a clear coat in matte. There's a couple different things that I like to do. If I'm painting any form of white or beige, all of my pieces in white and beige are going to be sealed in wax. You know why? Because it's easier. When you paint a light color, um, it's hard to do something and not get bleed through. Okay, so by painting a light color and then protecting my piece in wax rather than using um, my clear coat, I'm not allowing those tannins to kind of come through. Because what happens is if you um, have a clear coat and it's, it's 
wet on a dark piece or a piece like this, this is kind of a red undertone, what's going to happen is it's going to start to pull those original tannins from the wood out. And that never really happens until you seal your piece. And then you're going to be sad because you've put a lot of work and effort into your piece. And you don't want to have that happen. You don't want to have to go back and go, oh great, now I have to start all over and prime. You can always prime with your boss. The boss comes in two colors, clear and white. Um, and that by priming in boss, that allows you to um, make sure that your piece is not going to have bleed through. Sometimes I'm too busy and I don't want to take the time to clear coat and boss my piece. Uh, so what happens is I just make sure I use wax. When, I, when unsure, use wax. Because if you're unsure if you're going to have bleed through, the wax is going to really prevent that from happening. If you think that something is going to come through in your tannins, you should just be sure and use wax. It just saves a little bit of trouble, saves a little bit of hassle. So I see some people on here I'm going to pick up. Hey, Erin, are you not at work? You're painting? <laughs> you're painting like me? Are you still painting that apartment and getting it ready? That's crazy. I'm, um, I'm wasting time, like usual. I do have a couple custom things that I have finished today, but I'm just kind of being fun on the floor. I picked up some new stencils, and I want to kind of get crazy with that. All right, so here's the other deal with um, ombre and blending your colors. Your initial coats go down, and you do not blend them, okay? I'm using a damp brush. These brushes are all damp. They've been freshly washed. So what I'm going to do is lay down my initial color without blending them together. All I'm doing is really laying out my pattern, getting it close, not really cross-contaminating my brush yet. It's almost there, but we're not pulling it together until we do our second coat. Okay, once we do our second coat, it's much easier to pull those colors together. I'm using a different paintbrush than the one I just used before. And I'm just kind of hopping in here and laying my color down. So I've got one leg I could do. This leg is gonna be mermaid tail. And this is just going to be a fun little table. I've taken to um, finding fun little whimsical pieces to paint. Number one, because the size is a bit smaller. So it's allowing me to be able to move stuff around a little bit easier. Sometimes if I'm at home by myself and I'm painting and I have a giant buffet that I need to paint to move around, that's not going to happen. <laughs> it's just me and my lonesome 99.9% .9 of the time painting. So unless I corral somebody into helping me move furniture, it's just making my life easier to paint small things. So by doing small things, I'm saving my back, I'm saving the hassle, I'm not um, taking up a ton of space because I do work out of my home. So if something doesn't sell fairly quickly, it lives here with me in my dining room, which means we don't eat here in my dining room. <laughs> It's just the way it goes. Eventually, I'm sure I'll get a shop. I'll figure it all out. For now, I'm doing what works, and this is what works. So I'm working on the mermaid tail right now. I'm gonna pull this halfway, and then I'm gonna stop and move into my second color, or my third color. I don't know what I wanna to do to the top of this piece yet. I've been doing a lot of white, and a lot of stripes, and a lot of diamonds. I might not. I might completely do this in ombre in another color, tape it off. I think I'm gonna tape it off, and then I'm gonna do stencils over top of the tape. So that each stripe is actually patterned and really cute because these little guys are actually really cheap and our AC more crafts are closing. They've decided they're no longer going to be open on the East Coast. So everything is 25% off. So if you're close to an AC more craft store, you might want to go shopping and get some fun stencils. Sales are a good way for you to try new things without having to blow the budget. Um, yeah, try new things. Have fun with it. Have fun with your paint. All right, third color, cobalt, which is crazy blue. I love this blue. This is like insanely vibrant, very blue, a lot of fun. Once again, my brushes are already dampened, so I'm just gonna get in here and lay my base, my initial colors. The other good thing about small tables and painting on small tables is that you're allowing yourself to practice new techniques or try new colors without committing to a very big, giant piece. If you have a really big buffet um, and you're wanting to do a fun, whimsical, crazy finish, it might take a little bit longer to sell. It's, a, it's one of those things that you need to find the market for this. And then once you do, you know, you're lucky. I'm, I'm very lucky that I have a group of followers that really like this whimsical style of painting. 
Um, I also take my items to a, a local store here in Richmond, Virginia called the Lazy Daisy. And the Lazy Daisy um, works with me in consignment to sell some of those pieces that might be hanging out just a little bit longer that I need to push and get rid of. Because some of these colorful pieces like this need, need more eyes. It's hard to show in pictures how fun and gorgeous they really are. And they are, they're fun, they're whimsical, they're gorgeous, they look amazing in a kid's room. I feel like they're just a really good pop of color. All right, so there's my initial coat of cobalt down. And we're gonna move along. I'm trying to keep my paint a little bit out of the way here. I'm not gonna lie, there's paint all over my floor. I did repaint some trim today. It's getting, um, it's getting a little messy in here. I have a staging floor and it just got totally ruined. I mean, it's done. So I put that outside in the garbage and now I need to get a new one. But it's ginormous and I have to bring that thing home by myself. <laughs> so I, uh, I'm working on a drop cloth, which is hopefully saving majority of my floors, but probably not at the end of the day. Okay, so when I'm going to pull this together, which is not right now, Blue and red pull together easy. Think of your color wheel when you're doing this and try and keep it within that same color family because um, it's just easier. It's easier on you to blend. It's easier on you at the end of the day to pull it together. I might even put some blue actually in between here because blue and green goes easy together as well as red and blue goes easy together. Think about these things when you're laying down your colors and planning. It just helps keep, um, keep it a little bit easier to do at the end of the day. Because the harder, the more opposite on the color wheel the colors are, the harder they are to blend together. It's just not gonna work. Red and green, super hard. Green and blue, yes. Blue and red, yes. So it's just at the end of the day saving you some hassle. What do you think I should do on the top of this thing? Stripes? I don't know, I'm wondering. We'll see what happens. After I get this leg done, I'm gonna go back and see a spot I missed in my blue and fix that. And it's good to and say hi and see my comments. Hello, hello from the UK. Hi, how are you? So cool to have you join me from far away. I love making new friends um, from all over the world and answering questions and talking. And now, if you're in the UK, you can get Dixie Bell. Dixie Bell is now shipping and doing drop shipping in the UK. So you are now able to try these amazing products. Yay, yay for Dixie Belle. It took them a while to get that way, um, but now they're doing that out there and I think there's a lot of new people shopping Dixie Belle <laughs> in the UK, it seems to me anyways. All right, so we're back to the beginning. So this is my base coat of my ombre. All it is is the initial coats laid down with a damp brush in the place they're going to go. Some coats have more coverage of paint than others. You're going to find that the dark, darker and deeper your color, so anything like this or an aubergine is going to uh, cover with less amount of paint. The lighter your paint, the brighter your paint, the more coats it's going to take. Anything white, anything light, it's always gonna take two, three coats versus maybe one and a half coats in like in the navy or a darker color. So keep that in mind when you're using your, your colors, um, knowing that certain colors are gonna take less amounts of paint. It's kind of a good thing to do too if you're crunched on time and you wanna paint something quickly, to know that you can paint it and get it done in like a one coat coverage is really, it saves the day at the end of the day. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. I want to save this brush for metallics, okay? I have moonshine metallics that I'm going to be putting on the drawer of this piece. Now what's going to happen is, when you are using moonshine metallics, anything with a metallic in it goes on smoother and easier with a new brush, okay? This brush is fairly new. I think I've only used it once and washed it once. You need to be aware that moonshine metallics show a lot more streaks, a lot more strokes if your brush is old and worn out. So when doing moonshine metallics, use a new brush 
It will keep your, your strokes very smooth, very even. You're gonna have less fighting to do when you have to do that, but I'm super excited to use this. It's a new one for me. I'm pumped. So I'm gonna put that aside and think about my drawer. I'm going to paint my drawer in holy guacamole. You know why? Because I can. <laughs> because this piece is just for fun. This is just me sitting on the floor having fun with this piece. I'm gonna use my brush, my kudzu brush, and I just put paint in my hair. I know I did, but that's okay. We're fancy like that. So I'm gonna use my kudzu brush and I'm going to cross contaminate, but that's okay because you're not really gonna tell. They're almost exactly the same. Holy guacamole just has a tiny bit more yellow to it. I don't mind mixing it up a little bit on here. I just wanna get two coats down on this so that when it's dry, I'm able to do my taped off stripes. So you can't tape off your stripes and do that until it's dry. So I'm gonna have to sit on this and wait for it. It's gonna need two coats. And once it gets the two coats on there and they're dry, I can take this off for stripes very easily with my painter's tape. You always wanna keep your paint completely dry before you use your tape. If you do not, you're gonna pull off your paint and then you're gonna be in trouble. So I'm going to move this back over here, out of the way. We're gonna let it get dry. We'll see how far we get today but I think I can probably start to blend my colors a little bit now and show you how I'm going to do that so I'm going to go back into my kudzu which is this beautiful green and I'm just going to lay these colors down and cover the initial paint color that I did first this is when you're going to need your misting bottle okay keep your misting bottle on hand because you are going to need it I'm not going to blend yet what I'm going to do is cover my first coats again and make sure there's no wood peeking through, okay? Once I've covered my entire wood surface with two coats of paint, that's when I'm gonna start to pull things together. And that's when your brushes are gonna get a little bit more contaminated and you can pull your colors together. You don't wanna contaminate them until you have completed your initial two coats. Because if you do, then you're gonna be stuck with dirty brushes. And since I'm sitting on the floor with you, I can't really get up and wash them. So I will not do that, I will wait. Okay, this is the other thing about Dixie Belle paint. Look at how well that little amount of paint covers. That was one dip in a tiny little eight ounce container. It works like a charm, like there's no, there's no beating this. It's really, really good. I think I'm gonna cover a little bit up here too on the lip, just because I don't know what I'm doing on the top yet and I don't wanna see it come off on the bottom. You gotta think about these things when you're doing projects to sell. If somebody's looking at this table and they pick it up, they don't wanna see wood on the bottom. They wanna see everything painted. So take that extra time to kind of go underneath anywhere where they're gonna see it, you're gonna to want to make sure you've painted. Because nobody wants to see kind of like a half done job, right? They wanna see pretty, pretty paint. And that means taking the extra time to just do those small little things. Okay, here we go. That's my kudzu. I'm gonna move it over here and we're gonna turn this around Seriously? I mean, really. I just bath in paint. It would just, honestly, it's not much easier just to bathe in paint. I'm always covered. Okay, we're gonna move into mermaid tail. I'm gonna go to my mermaid tail. Once I get this coat down, we're gonna start to blend together. Now, mermaid tail is a little bit more dry than the other one. I'm gonna dampen my brush a little bit. By dampening my brush, it keeps my paint movable. Dixie Belle paint is a chalk mineral paint which means that it dries very, very quickly. And if you spray it with water, since it is a water-based product, it kind of reactivates a little bit. It gives you the ability to move your paint around, which is really cool. Because if you're like me, I like to look at furniture like paint, like art, and I like to move my paint around and paint fun finishes. And you wouldn't be able to do that with some of these other paints because they, they just don't blend well together. But being able to reactivate with my water bottle, it just makes my life super, super easy. And you use, when you do these colors, like when you do an ombre effect like this, 
you're using so little amount of paint on one project, you're going to be able to do multiple, multiple projects at one time. So this one little can of eight ounce paint, and I see my husband pulling in, which means the dogs are going to bark, so hang tight. It's going to get noisy. This one little can of paint, this little eight ounce container, covers 100, and I think it's 37 square feet, which is crazy. It's a super large amount of paint. One little tiny jar covers so much. All right, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna blend together a little bit right now, okay? So I've got my mermaid tail, and I've got my kudzu. I've got a dog hair on here that I wanna get off. And we're gonna pull these together. So in order to pull them together, you take your two brushes, okay? You're gonna keep your two colors handy, and you're gonna make sure that they're wet, okay? Okay, the dog's bark. I like to blend my lights and my darks kind of at the same time. So we're gonna see how it goes bringing the mermaid tail and the kudzu, and then we're gonna go backwards. By keeping your brush damp, you're able to move that paint around really easy, okay? So I'm gonna put this down, I'm gonna go back with my green brushes with my kudzu, and I'm gonna to start to pull this over and see what happens. Sometimes you're gonna see one color blends easier into the others. Purple blends super easy compared to some of the others. This is not, this is not hard. This is just a matter of finding the technique that works for you. I don't mind going left to right, I don't mind going up and down. But I'm also gonna keep going back and forth with my two brushes, okay? Here we go. I'm digging this. Okay, so now I've got a little bit of the mermaid tail at the bottom coming across and I've got the kudzu pulled in. I'm happy with that blend, I'm gonna leave it. One of the tricks to doing an ombre effect is knowing when to quit, okay? You can't just keep pushing and pulling and pushing and pulling. You're gonna overwork the paint, and then what's gonna happen is you're gonna to start to get mad because things are gonna get cross-contaminated too much and it's gonna get hard to work with. So this, for me, is good. I'm gonna stop there. All right, we're gonna go around. Remember, I've already done my full coat of mermaid tail, so I'm gonna work on my cobalt now. And once I get that second coat of, coat of cobalt, say that 10 times fast, once I get that down, I can start to pull these two colors together. And I've blended these two colors before, and they do go together very easily. So I'm not worried about this. This will be an easy blend. I just wanna make sure I get this entire table leg covered with the second coat. And you can always go back in later and turn your table upside down and double check that you got all the little corners, all the little spots, because you don't want to miss anything. You want to make sure that you cover well, and sometimes the only way to do that is turn your table upside down. You have to hit me up with what you think I should do to the top of this piece, because I don't know yet. I don't know what I'm going to do. Some form of Stripes, whether it be stripes on color or gold. I think I'm tired of black and white, not gonna lie. I've done a lot of it lately. And um, sometimes it's too fussy. You know, getting up the tape and having to work with that and working everything around and making sure all your lines are covered, it's a little tiring. <laughs> and I don't think I wanna do it today. Okay, so let's go back. So we've got cobalt, we've got mermaid tail, okay? I'm gonna take my mermaid tail and I'm going to keep my brush damp, and I'm gonna to start to pull these together. I see some hearts on there. Hi, Cynthia, you're so fun. You know what, I do like these colors together too. Thank you for watching. You're always a good supporter, Cynthia. I totally appreciate you. So, remember I'm contaminating now because this brush is gonna go both ways. And I'm gonna keep it wet. and I'm gonna pull it back and forth. There's no problem going up and down, side to side. It's a matter of finding what works for you. So now I've got my blend kind of with my mermaid tail in there. Now I'm gonna switch and do my cobalt. This is gonna get a little harder because this is darker. It is harder, harder to blend these darker colors, but they do blend. You just have to work it to the point where you're happy with it. 
keep a light hand, feather, okay, feather your colors together. By switching the directions, left to right, up and down, you're just moving your paint to the area that you like. Okay, now I'm gonna go back with my mermaid tail, keep your brush damp. So now you can see it does take a little bit more effort, but it's still totally doable. Green into blue is definitely easier than say green into red. So keep it easy on yourself. Keep it simple, but keeping it in the same color family, you're just saving yourself the hassle. There you go. Now I'm going to stop because remember what I said about overworking it? If you overwork your blend, you're going to start to pull paint back and you're not going to be happy. I'm going to let this dry. I like this. I see a shadow. FYI, that's not my ombre blend. That's a shadow of the window. This is going well together. The other little trick is this is at the back of the table. This is the very back side of the table. So I'm not really crazy about like, oh my gosh, it has to be perfect like the front. This is perfect enough for me. Move along. You can always come back and change it. I like this blend. All right, so we've covered this entire leg in cobalt. I see a little spotted mist. I'm gonna go back and then another coat after this dries and like do the feet in the opposite color, which would be really cute. Okay, so now we're gonna go back into the muscadine line. We're gonna do our second coat. And now you can really see what I mean about that one coat coverage. Muscadine line is very similar to aubergine you can get away with minimal, minimal amounts of paint. It's really, it's pretty much covered in one coat. It's amazing. By doing that one coat and just barely even touching it for the second, super, super easy. Okay, so get your brush wet. to the right. I don't know why. It's just kind of the way my arm goes with blending. I very rarely would start from the right into the left. I don't know why. I'm going to make sure it covered that inside. Okay. Now we're going to go back to the cobalt. Wet brush again. And I always like to pull it over a little bit further on the bottom. Wet brush. There you go. I'm happy with that. I'm also going to add transfers to this piece too. So here's another little handy dandy trick. If you did a blend and you were not happy with the transition, throw a transfer over top of it. Who's going to know? You can always do that too. Okay, so back to the beginning. Remember I added the blue in the middle to pull my green in. Now, I'm going to just pull this musket on line. Can you see? into the blue. Okay, let's bring in a tiny bit closer. Woo. I'm just gonna bring this over, keeping it wet.
because it's going to be easier again to brush into the blue and brushing into the green, right? It's just an easy way to do a smoother transition. And I'm going to do the same with the kudzu. Basically just dampening up that same area that I was going over and pulling it back together. Light hand, feathering it. Just making my job easier. Work with what you got. Work smarter, not harder. There you go. I'm done. I'm done the base for now. I'm going to stop here. I'm going to let this get dry. Think about what I want to do to the top of this piece. Again, it's going to be some form of ombre and stripes. I just don't know what yet. And I'm going to keep thinking about what I want to do to the top. But for now, this base is finished. I've just shown you in like 20 minutes or less how to achieve an ombre finish with Dixie Belle paint. I use multiple colors. I've got kudzu, mermaid tail, cobalt, muscadine wine. Remember, easy way to transition and blend these colors together is to keep a color in the middle that blends well with both. Think about these patterns before you lay your paint down and you're gonna be just fine. It's an easy way to do an ombre blend and I've done the top drawer in holy guacamole and I'm going to be doing some really cool metallics with this piece. I've got my new Moonshine Metallics in Caribbean and I'm kind of excited about this. I also have these fun little stencils. So stay tuned, I'll come back. Um, and FYI reminder, I am on the Dixie Belle Paint page tomorrow at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can come and watch me. Um, and then I will be back again on Saturday. I will be painting a pie safe from start to finish using stripes, similar ombre, and gold leaf. All right, I hope everybody's doing well. If you have any questions, drop me a message in the comments below and I'll be happy to come through and answer them. And if you were interested in shopping any Dixie Belle paint, the link to order is above my head. So that's it. You just joined me on my little sit on the floor painting journey today. I hope you learned something and I hope you had fun following along. All right. Take care, everybody. Have a great day.